we're going to do a review of four bike helmets that I have used over the past four years. I've actually struggled a bit on which bike helmet was good for me um, and under what circumstance. So I figure I'd share some of this with you. I'm going to be talking about this from like an everyday rider, right? I ride a bike for a number of reasons. First, I ride a bike almost every day to work using a city bike in Manhattan. Logged a ridiculous amount of rides. Um, so, and um, I also ride recreationally. And then I ride, you know, um, for sport. I ride to get some exercise. Um, I ride for, ride for leisure. I mean, I'm on a bike almost every day in good weather and probably a few times a week during bad weather and through the winter. <coughs> So the first one we're going to look at here is uh, from Giro. This is a Giro um, Reverb. So this one goes about for about 60 bucks. Um, it's pretty entry level. What I liked about it was it had this built-in visor. It wasn't crazy that it was fabric. I felt it was going to get nasty, and it did. Um, and this one only has an elastic um, for the back head adjustment. Which there's no dial, and I was very concerned about that, and it really wasn't too much an issue, and um, I think that's how you say it, Giro, Giro, I apologize. Um, if this helmet looks beat up, well, it is. Now, to give you an idea, this is my commuting helmet, this one I mainly used uh, for city bike riding, and, you know, when I'm using um, a helmet for commuting, I'm only on the bike for a few minutes. I'm on, the rest of the time I'm on mass transit, I'm on the railroad, I'm in my car. So in, so in that case, these things take far more abuse um, being attached to my hip or my backpack um, and just going through the New York City mass transit system. Why there's so many marks on the top of it and divots and that's mainly, you know, hitting turnstiles and hitting seats and getting thrown around in my backpack. I mean, these things take a lot of abuse. This is from May of 2015. So I used it for one year and it didn't hold up that great. I mean, first of all, let's just talk about the way this, helps. this thing looks. You know, as I said, it's really beat up. Instant scuff marks. This one came right there in the store. As soon as I bought it, the guy around the counter dropped it with that mark on it. The budget was a big factor here. I didn't want to spend a lot of money because I, I sometimes leave these things on a train and then that really stinks. Um, that's how I lost the one before this, which I really like. For the most part, it worked. I used it for a full year. Um, eventually, it just started kind of falling apart a little bit and things kind of getting a little nasty. It wasn't a bad buy, but given how easily this thing marked up, I mean, if you just kind of did that, you put a mark on it. So it was pretty easy to mark it up. Um, so after that I wanted something a little bit more uh, that would fit me better and we come to this, to the Triple Eight. Now you see this is branded City Bike and this reason for that is that the City Bike brand special to encouraging people to get helmets, I think 20 bucks off. It's the standard Triple Eight uh, cycling helmet. Um, just with their brand on it, a cool little uh, city silhouette in the background. Um, it has this tiny little visor here, which honestly did nothing. If it looks a bit bulky, it is. Um, I, I, it, it was way too bulky. It was it's huge. Um, if, if we go over and look at it compared to the Giro here, it is definitely a bigger helmet. And part of the mistake is the sizing. So this one fit me very nicely. You know, you just struggle with is how to size the helmet right. You don't always have an opportunity to fully try on all your options if you're buying online and such. So this is a medium, and then I made the mistake, and I thought for some reason I needed a large. I, I probably sized, read, read the sizing instructions, which, and probably just sized myself wrong. Now, cases where a large helmet helps is like in the winter, where I'm wearing so much gear that I kind of needed something like this, and if you watch my Brad Rover in the snow video, you see that honestly it doesn't look so ridiculous at that point. It actually looks like it's fitting me pretty correctly given the goggles and everything else. It is boring. 
just to give you an idea, these these helmets are both um, worn the same amount of time through the same conditions. And let's see how they held up looking next to each other. Yeah, the paint jobs yeah, on, on camera, I think the stuff show up a little bit better on this one, but honestly, this one's much more beat up. And as far as dents go, this thing has barely any dents on it. Things pretty smooth surface. Where this thing, it, I mean, it has got divots all over the place. Size, just a big open skull. There's nothing, it's just a strap that's holding the just the big helmet seat. There's no like webbing or anything. So I don't. It wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. It's a bit bulky. Uh, I'll be honest. I wound up not riding with it a lot because anybody taking with it, this is heavy. It's a heavy freaking helmet. One thing I liked about this one was that it was pretty light. This one's one of the lightest ones I own, but not the lightest. We're going to get to the lightest and best in just a second. Here's what I'm going to call the surprise of the bunch. And that's the Thousand Helmet. This was a big chance. This is the first generation Thousand Helmet. So I purchased it in September of 2017. It's the longest helmet I've used. And I was very unsure if this thing was even going to work for me. If there's a city commuting helmet, this is it. If you want something that's going to last and give you some protection, this is it. So this is the first generation. I think there's a newer version out now, which I, we'll, we'll see if we get our hands on or not. And this helmet here features a hole to lock the helmet to your bike. Now I apologize folks that I'm going to about to show you this helmet after 18 months of use, but honestly, I think that's really how you want to see it. It is going to be beat up looking, but it's actually in very good shape. It's in the place for most of the use is the locking hole. Now, I did not use this for locking. I used this for commuting. This was the perfect solution to have a, put it on my bag, and then throw a carabiner. On top of that, once once the carabine is on your side, once the bag's on your side, you see how it just kind of stays snug to the body. It is latched to me like this more often than I'm using it. I thought for sure eventually this piece here would break. And what has happened, the, um, the foam has been totally scraped away. You know, edging has been broken off and, and cut and the cap that was magnetically attached, even though it was tethered, that got ripped off. Thought there'd be marks all here in white, and, and look, it has pretty much contained itself only to the inside. You know, I've had this carabine attached to it the whole time, bang, with this metal banging up against here. So the finish on this thing is fantastic. This was a Kickstarter campaign, and there was only one way to buy it, it was online. At one point, going to the Kickstarter, and then there was only one way to buy it online, and it finally made it to a few retail stores. I, by the time I found it, it was in a retail store. I, I went in there expecting to purchase a certain size, and I didn't, I wound up getting um, a size smaller instead. This one is a medium, though. Once again, I measured myself online, and it said I would be a large, and then when I went in there, it was a medium that would actually fit me better. The inside doesn't even look at all funky or dirty. Now, once again, this thing has just been commuting with me through all sorts of weather. It has hundreds, if not thousands of miles, biking miles on it. And it just it's held up. What also is great is the strap. The material held up very well. Um, the buckles still look nice and shiny, and then here's the best part of this thing. Now, I believe other bike helmets have this, but there's very few, and this was a big factor for me, is how easy this belt buckle, that's it. It's, it's attached, it seems ridiculous, but there is a lock. It's magnetic, so once, see, you have to press it, this button here, and there's a button there that unlocks it, and then when you want to lock it, you just get it close, the magnet grab, and then it, when the magnet grab, it also slide locks it into place. So I never once had it come loose on me. Never once. 
come together and boom, look at that. It is, <laughs> I still love it. Now what I'm not crazy about is this whole system they had and I will tell you that for some reason it worked fine. I, I'd never thought that just a simple webbing like this would really work that well. And it does, you know, it, it, it held up so well and it's, Thumbs up, thousand. It's not a heavy helmet, it's not a light helmet, but it's on the lighter side. Uh, it's the weight I'm fine with. And you think just with that one hole up there, it's not enough venting. Uh, and I had a problem with the heat. The weight, which had not too much venting. It's when I had a lot, and yeah, I do feel a difference, but I don't know, for some reason it never really bothered me. I thought it would. <laughs> Last, let's just talk about this thousand helmet. I mean, it has kind of a little bit of a baseball batter feel or, or, or maybe a moped feel or, or something. But part of it, you know, you get this little bit of a lip, um, almost a question like. Um, and you get a little bit of a lip here and that is really great for the sun. I mean, it's just, it's, it's perfect. He did a really good job designing this helmet. Now, here's another Giro. And this one is a MIPS. This is the Giro Savant. This is, uh, I purchased in 2018. Now I still use my 1000 helmet, but I use this one I don't want to leave it. This is a very, you know, aggressive, sporty looking helmet. Now why wouldn't I commute with this? Let's just talk about that. First, I don't have that same quick latch system. And I'm telling you for commuters, that's very key to be able to quickly latch and get it on off the city bikes, you know. Um, and also now when it's attached to my bag, if these things aren't clipped together, they're just going to drape and knock into things. The other part is that with all these holes here, this is going to get caught on shit. I know from experience. It's going to get caught on other people, as nasty as that sounds. Like I'll be on the subway and this will be attached to my backpack and then all of a sudden I'm attached to someone else's backpack because I got caught doing one of these loops. But when I'm on the bike traveling steady 20 miles an hour with a lot of weight behind me and the bike and my and my luggage, I want something really good to protect my head and I want something to kind of lock to my head. So obviously if this one does have a dial system, beyond that, the MIP system inside, it's these yellow dots you see. <laughs> Some I almost made the mistake this was packing material and I think other people's had you have. You do not want to rip this plasticky thing out. You don't feel it. But this is this whole plastic structure is with the webbing that tightens down on impact. It's very lightweight, it vents obviously very well. It's kind of badass looking in some ways. It doesn't have any kind of front visor. Um, I don't really have any kind of front visor, but I'm always wearing sunglasses and I don't really have a problem with it, but I, I, I would rather have had a visor. And look, this thing is held up pretty well. I mean, I, I put, um, I have over a thousand miles between, um, e-bike so this thing has been um i use this helmet majority of the time so i hope you found this helpful gives you an idea of some different style helmets i try not to spend too much money i, I my biggest investment was here because i did want the, the highest level of protection but you don't need to do that um if you're riding more aggressively then obviously you should have more protection but if you're just a standard rider, then you should get something that's a rookie. Obviously, you get around protection, but also around function. Um, you know, I am going to recommend the 1000 helmet. Um, you're just going to have a problem with the sizing. It's going to be hard to find them in the stores, and and they don't, I don't know if they changed their return policy, but they didn't. What they had before was bad, and I would have bought the wrong one. So that's something that you're going to have to consider if you're looking to buy a thousand is how to size it for you. They have a lot of cool designs. Um, and then, um, you know, Triple Eight is very much a good kids helmet. I see that for use for kids a lot. They have a good version of the kids. It, I feel like it gives you good all around protection. I think it is a good kids helmet. And, you know, that guy there was a decent one. It lasted a year, but it got muddied up very quickly. Um, I just kind of felt it fell apart. Once again, this helmet's been in use more than all three of them combined. And, um, you know, they have a new version of this out now that has the webbing, which has me really considering, you know, that's one thing I'm missing from this, is to give me a little better support. And this is starting to get a little funky. So, 
don't know, maybe I'll send this video over to Thousand and say, how about, uh, refresh my helmet? I don't know. How about a Thousand? I can need a new helmet.